What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my Volleyball Coach Reaction Series to Q Season 2, Episode 5. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who provides volleyball tutorials, jump training workouts, and other cool volleyball videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more content. Thank you to all of you who participated in the YouTube survey where I asked you what time should I post the weekly Q reaction videos. So I'll be posting a brand new Q reaction video every Saturday at 4 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So you guys know exactly when to tune in each week. The reason why this is important is because the more people that watch during the first hour of the video being posted, the more YouTube will promote the video and increase viewership. So make sure that you share my reaction videos with all of your high Q and volleyball friends. You may have noticed that I'm wearing this brand new shirt, which is our latest Elevate Apparel release called the Pride Bold Tee. This design was part of the Pride series and inspired by Chinese New Year. The back says higher, faster, stronger in Chinese, which is what we strive to become at Elevate Yourself. You don't have to be Chinese to wear this shirt. You just have to be proud of your own culture and family heritage and proud of what Elevate Yourself stands for. So make sure that you get your own Pride Bowl tee at the Elevate Apparel Store linked below. Thanks for clarifying all the details that I may have missed, such as the passing score being 40 points, Fukurodani's animal mascot being a horned owl, and Lev's animal teeth being a tiger. There's a lot to keep track of, and trying to read all the subtitles is challenging while also doing a reaction to them. I like how Karasuna is not from a major city because it adds more to their underdog personality and it just makes them more relatable to everyone else. I'm definitely the type to binge watch something when I really enjoy it, but for me, watching another episode of Haikyuu means spending an additional 6-8 to eight hours of video editing, so I really only have time to watch one per week. Also, I don't want to skip ahead because that would make my reactions less authentic. This totally sounds like something that Hinata would do. Being too eager and too anxious and ends up making simple, preventable mistakes. This actually reminds me a lot of myself. Thanks for noticing the new editing graphics. Video editing is actually enjoyable for me because I view it as an art form to tell a story and teach values in a more engaging manner. I also try to learn things from other YouTubers and apply some of their video techniques. If you guys remember what I talked about in a previous video about the growth mindset, I try to apply that mentality to every aspect of my life. So I'm always trying to think of ways to make my videos better. I've learned that success in life is more about finding enjoyment and making progress more so than the end result. If you've been enjoying my videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon where you receive exclusive access to my monthly live Q&A sessions, podcasts, my private blog, behind the scenes footage, and more. You can sign up with the link in the description box. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell so you never miss a video. Now let's get this high cave party started. Ooh, practice jerseys. That means we're gonna see some more volleyball and more insight into the Karasuno practice. Oh, team manager taking notes, that's really great. She's a more than just setting the net up and running drills, she's involved. Oh, they're still at the the round robin scrimmage. <laughs> they're not at home. Go show him what you've got. Let's see what he means by that. Hoping he would be more specific on what type of player or what type of set or offense they want to run. Ooh, he gets the face off against the Tiger. Sakoi! Greed. That's an interesting name for this. Episode, maybe a, a player is being greedy by wanting every single set. Oh, 
<laughs> Drinking with the teachers? That's odd. I highly doubt that that happens in Japan. Ooh, Lev is impressed. Man, he's not that still closing his eyes, so he has not learned to change direction yet. Ooh, and a coach wearing sunglasses indoors. That's that's pretty cool. I want to go back to this frame because usually Kageyama displays pretty good technique other than his hand spreading. But here is actually not very good setting posture. Now what I mean by setting posture is the stance that you are, I guess your ready position when you're setting. So ideally when you're setting, just like you see the defenders back there, like they're in a ready position, the setters also have their own ready position. It's not the same as the defensive ready position. So he should have his hips and knees bent slightly. So a slight lean forward and then hands already positioned early. You don't want to put your hands up at the last second. Here on the other hand, Kageyama is leaning backwards. So what that's going to do is going to one, make his set more readable because when you're leaning backwards, that most likely means you're going to back set. Also, if you do try to forward set, you're losing a lot of momentum and you're only using your arms. So you want to make sure as a setter, you always want to start in a neutral position where your body is pretty much straight up and down, soft knees, soft hips, which means they're just bent slightly to, to be springy, ready, and then be able to extend for power. Kageyama's jumped is super early. Oh, Lev read it early. Oh, he already got a block. That's a quick adaptation. And that's within the first set. And when you're taller, it is easier because you're, you're kind of already at that height. And Lev kept his promise. He did say he was going to stop him. He's going to be the only one that's going to block him. And let's see if Hinata actually... Oh, that's the Bruce Lee move. Come on and get it. Mm. That's where you wait to see what's going to happen versus fully committing to what you think is going to happen. Oh, this is the straight ahead quick. Oh, wow. Lev has a good read. That's just being patient. The only way you can stop Hinata's quick is to fully commit to Hinata's attack. Because it's so fast that by the time you go down and up to block, he's already hitting it because he's hitting, I guess what a lot of the Haikyuu people call minus tempo. That means Hinata is actually in the air before the setter actually sets it, which is actually very rare. So the only way to stop it is to plan early and get your body there and then fully commit. So essentially it's a, like an all or nothing block. Read blocking, however, is you're reacting to the situation a little bit more. And with read blocking, if Hinata ends up running a normal quick, which is jumping when the setter touches the ball, he has time to actually react to it. Or if he sees that Hinata's is not gonna get set then he hasn't wasted his jump on the quick attack and now he has time to stop Asahi. So that's what went on in this sequence. Yeah, he got faked a little bit, but because he wasn't commit blocking, he had time to shift over. Oh, and then Lev had time to transition. This is good. He's forcing Hinata to be better very soon. Ooh, what's Suga thinking? Yeah, you don't want to make your offense predictable just because you got blocked one or two times. It's, the score is only 2 3. It's, it's very early to call a timeout. And let's see what Hinata's thinking. Oh, 
Oh yeah, he's drawing energy from competition. That's a true competitor. Got an itchy nose here. There's Tora, I think that's his name. Tanaka's twin. Oh, who's gonna get this one? Go get it! Oh, he not as hard. That's what, maybe that's what they mean by being greedy. Oh, that's a dangerous play. Yeah, you better be sorry. Can't be so focused on wanting to hit that you end up taking someone else's ball. <laughs> wow. Coach Ukai just lost it. And now Kageyama's on him. Curious what advice Asahi will give him. That's right. Those that fail to adapt and evolve get left behind and lose. And I love these these animal illustrations as they're talking about it. It's a great way to emphasize the imagery there. Set me higher. It's about time. The crow has left the nest. Is that is that the the imagery there? That was a short intermission. Usually there's another serve after that. Lots of changes in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> At least he offered to, to actually hear him out later. Ooh, that's cold. I'm not going to set a guy who's not going to get kills. Even if you think that, you don't want to tell that to your teammates. You want them to stay confident. Yeah, now that we have a predictable offense and they're going to be able to slow down Tanaka and Asahi's attack. Oh, that was a hard hit. I was very perceptive of Shimizu to identify that they're all kind of on edge, which means they're they're all anxious about something, but the worst part is no one is talking about it and no one's really being upfront to deal with the anxiety there. And this is the first time where I feel like Coach Ukai is not doing the best job coaching. I think it's been amazing up until this point. So there's two people that should really insert themselves in this situation and take control of the situation. Not by saying they have to physically take control, like serve every ace and get every kill, although that is helpful. What I mean by take control of the situation is to have or start a conversation with the team or to just be direct and say, hey, I know you guys bumped into each other. Asahi, that's your ball. Hinata, just be more patient and just move on or talk about it. But no one's really talking about it. And so people are kind of wondering who's going to do what or not really properly dealing with the emotions that's happening right now. So when this happens, that usually means everyone gets really quiet and hesitant. That's the worst thing you can do in volleyball. Volleyball is all about communication and constructive energy. You don't always have to be positive because sometimes you can get angry and that's okay. But you have to have constructive energy right now. Everyone's giving off nervous energy and being quiet. So that doesn't do anyone good. Yeah, even Nishinoya is not really talking. But that's where the coach has to step in and, and, and take control if a player is not. Yeah, 
の時のあれは漠然とした恐怖だこのままではひたすら貪欲に成長し続ける日なたに。いいな、ばいひなた、I wonder what that means。Oh, like taking all of his sets. <laughs> Old grandpa walking by, making some Tsuki comments. <laughs> These are very accurate volleyball images of what everyone's doing at, at one point. Yeah, just like I said, sometimes progress is more important than the result. <laughs> That's why they got the literature teacher out here. Good, good way to balance out Coach Ukai, who is just mainly dealing with this, the skill aspect and the team management. それしかトッパ校がないと思ったからです。正常戦のラスト。気づいたら負けてた。気づいたら打ったボールは俺の後ろで床に落ちてた。悪かったわ。最後は完全に読まれた。俺が負けたのに。Ooh, still reflecting on that loss. That's a good thing. Let regret drive you to be better. Ooh, that's a beautiful animation with the wind blowing, adding some drama to that. That's great. Great storytelling. I'm trying to figure out what Kageyama means by that. There, he's speaking very cryptically. So you can't really make the quick that much better. And that's just one aspect of the offense. You have to develop other parts, just like we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. That's why most teams don't do it. It's the reward doesn't is not always worth the risk. That's because Tanaka has time to think about those things on a slower set, and that's what they need to do. But he's been closing his eyes this whole time. How can you see that? Maybe he can sense it? <laughs> this is good. It's good to see Kochu Kai be a little bit more human. Ooh. Ooh, okay. I like this bold move by the coach. Player safety first, I get it. And now, Hinata just has to learn how to be a good teammate and watch and learn. And be better that way. Can't try to win on his own like Kageyam, the old Kageyama. Thank you. 
Ooh, another training camp. More playing, more practice. More nighttime horror scenes. <laughs> the old man needs company. Can't wait to hear Hinata's thoughts. <laughs> yeah, Lev is just a happy guy. He's like a bigger version of Hinata. I don't sense any any ill will inside him, at least not yet. It's a gentle tiger. This is interesting. Another character, another name to remember. Yeah, even if they have things to work on, it's good just to step away and disengage, recharge. But I'm sure Hinata's gonna wanna. Uh, yes, right, he's gonna wanna work. Let's see if Kakeyama's up for it. Man, the fact that they can have access to the gym anytime, I wish I had that when I was in school. Ooh. Yachi's first opportunity to, to help run a drill. This is great for her. Tossing is a lot harder than most people think. One thing I love about the scene is seeing Hinata's evolution happening right in front of you. And I always tell my players that if you want to get better and you want to change a technique or a strategy, you have to accept that you're going to get worse before you're going to get better. Right? You have to take one step back so you can take two steps forward. And here you see you know that Hinata can hit their normal fast tempo, eyes closed, quick set like like nothing. But he's learned that that's not going to work. So now Hinata has to learn how to have better court vision and actually hit away from the block. So here Kageyama made a really accurate observation. Whenever you're changing something, we become more conscious of the process because we're trying to change our body movements, our mechanics, our timing. And in doing so, we're naturally going to move slower because it's no longer a relaxed unconscious process it, we have to think about it and that's normal you, whenever you're changing technique you have to be okay with missing a lot of hits to get the right mechanics because once you get the right mechanics or the right strategy down then you can start to relax and executing at the highest intensity like jumping as high as i can <laughs> that's not this favorite phrase So he's going to try to change. At some point, he has to leave a little bit later. And Kageyama has to set him a little bit higher. Let it sit in the air a little longer. We'll see what Hinata's frustration limit is before he realizes that something needs to be different. Hmm. And Hinata's gonna feel like he's worthless if his favorite move doesn't work. Hmm. 
<laughs> very, very observant, that's right. There we go, the truth comes out. Man, this... I hope people in Japan don't deal with confrontation with this type of violence, because this is not the first time we're... Kids are like punching each other over disagreements. Ooh, that's cold. <laughs> I thought he was gonna beat him up, but he's just. He wants to train more. Wow, these are really good animations. These movements are so hard to, to illustrate. I don't know why I'm smiling. This is actually a very emotional part, but... I just can't take these two seriously anymore. They're always fighting. Ah, what a gentleman. He not to walk in Yachi home. Yeah, it seemed like for a while they were actually going closer and, and more on the same page. But these tough losses are are really creating some dissension in the team and that's that's normal. Normal for teammates to start to lose trust in each other after difficult experiences together. Having fights and disagreements within teams, especially at the high school level, is actually very normal. Not to say it's a good thing, but I, I think it's important for teammates to have the opportunity to really express their concerns and how they feel. And sometimes things like that happen outside of your control where you're gonna have teammates that just bicker and fight on their own and sometimes it could get that bad. I actually did coach a team where one of the players punched another player because they were so frustrated uh, but that only happened once out of the all the teams I've coached. But the way to deal with a situation like this is you have to be intentional with solving these problems. So if I'm a concerned teammate, I would first talk to the coach about this issue, say, you know, these two players aren't getting along and it's affecting the team. Can we find a way to resolve this? And hopefully the coach will say, sure, thank you for bringing this to my attention. Because a lot of this stuff happens outside the coach's view. Could happen on social media, could happen in the classroom, could happen after practice. So you definitely want to build trust in your players if you're a coach to have your players feel comfortable enough to approach you about these type of concerns, right? You don't want to be so intimidating that they can't share the concerns about what's going on in the team. And then once you set up a team meeting, you give player A a chance to speak their piece without being interrupted. Give player B a chance to speak their piece without being interrupted. And then you share your thoughts. And then after that, you want to make sure you affirm and appreciate what they both said. Whether or not you think it's true, it's important to acknowledge that I understand how you feel and what you said. I understand what you feel and what you said. Then you want to come up with a solution together about what behaviors can you change to make sure these type of disagreements don't get to this point and also how to be better teammates with each other. 
And I always tell my players that you don't have to be best friends, but you have to respect each other enough and you do have to trust each other because trust off the court will make trust on the court a lot easier, whether you're boys volleyball team or girls volleyball team. So that's how I would resolve it. And I'm curious how the Karasuno is going to resolve this type of tension between Hinata and Kageyama because it's getting pretty bad. Yeah, but these fights are getting more intense and things can always escalate to worse and worse things. You don't want to wait till it gets really bad before you address it. You see these buns down there? Those are actual photos of buns. Those are not hand-drawn illustrated ones. Because those buns look way more realistic than the rest of the scene. Just happened to catch my eye. That's another thing to learn about animation illustration is you always want to illustrate or draw at the same consistency or quality whether something's better or worse. Now if you take a simple cartoon like Spongebob Squarepants where the illustrations are really simple you can put a beautiful image that's really detailed next to it it doesn't matter if that image is amazing if it doesn't match the style of Spongebob Squarepants it's going to be distracting for the viewer and it's going to take away from the enjoyment of the cartoon so those buns were distracting for me <laughs> それをさらにパワーアップさせるなんてドダイ無理な話。向こう側が見えました。てっぺんからの景色が見えました。あの目。自分がジャンプの最高点にいる時間など、文字通りに一瞬ブロックが見えると言っても、普通はぼんやりと
And yes, you will get better by playing more just because you get more experience and you get more touches, you have more coordination and, and all the other benefits that come with playing. But that will cause you to plateau really fast. Because if I don't have good passing technique or if I don't have good decision making, all I do by playing a lot is just get better at bad decision making. All I do by playing a lot is by getting better at bad passing technique. What people don't realize is that in order to really make significant progress, you have to make conscious changes to what you're doing. And a lot of people are not willing to do that, not because they don't think it's going to make them better, but because the, the pain of change and being worse is too much for some people to handle. You notice that last scene with Kageyama setting Hinata over and over again and Hinata was trying to explore and figure out how can I make the quick better a lot of people aren't willing to get to that point because it sucks it sucks to be bad it sucks to miss so many hits and not see the results right away I really admire Hinata for continuing to push forward and he can't figure out how he can get better so he's seeking the next best resource which is his coach on how to get better and how to use this amazing vision that he has above the net. I'll give you a perfect example of one of the most common issues I see when I work with defensive specialist players or back row players. Let's say if I'm right-handed and I have to dig the ball with one hand, majority of DSs will only dig with their dominant arm. So if I'm right-handed, I will only dig with my right arm. So if the ball's to my right, that's great. If the ball is to my left, a lot of them will end up turning this way and then trying to backhand the ball instead of using their left arm. Why do they do that? You just tend to have more control with their right arm. But the disadvantage is it takes more time for you to reach across your body. Right? You're losing this much time and when you're playing at a high level, every millisecond counts for you to have more time to dig the ball. So you don't have time to reach across and also you just aren't going to have a lot of control by bending backwards. It'll work a lot better if you learn how to use your left arm. You see how it bends toward the net so I can scoop the ball and I can dig the ball back forward. Where if my right arm, I can't really do it that much. My elbow doesn't bend that way. When I run defensive volleyball clinics, I try to teach this methodology where we learn how to dig with one arm on both sides. And as soon as they start using their non-dominant hand, let's say it's their left arm if they're usually right-handed, they miss the ball a lot. And the reason why they're bad at their left arm is because they never use it. And so those who are fully committed to wanting to significantly increase their one-arm digging control will do it as many times as they need to get the coordination and control with their left arm. And once they get it, after a thousand reps, two thousand reps, three thousand reps, they're gonna expand their ability to cover more court and dig more balls. That's the end goal, to make that improvement. But those that are unwilling to make those thousand missed digs and suffer through the frustration of missing so many digs with the left arm are not going to achieve that increased defensive performance. And so they will just continue digging with the right arm. And the way they're going to try to get better is by just getting better at bad technique, by digging more reps and trying to get more control with their right arm. And that's just going to plateau. So I'm really happy that Hinata is really putting conscious effort into his journey of getting better instead of just simply expecting to get better by playing more. The next question is, how is coach Ukai going to guide him to be better? And I can't wait to see how he deals with Hinata's situation. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.